I've always had a special affinity with Spider-Man. He's a character that, in different stages of my life, I've yearned to be and to be like. Growing up, he was an intoxicating mix of the extraordinary and of the relatable. Fly! Up, up, and away, whip! Shazam! He harbored a vulnerability that I all too often felt myself, but he had the strength to push back and help people in spite of his personal troubles. Plus, that costume. It's just beautiful. I mean, if I were to wear it, I would have curves in all of the wrong places. Anyway, I always wished that I could experience effortlessly web swinging through New York, a feeling that I related to nothing less than complete and utter freedom. Needless to say, I lapped up absolutely everything and anything that happened to have Spidey's name or face attached to it. I watched the various TV shows, animated or otherwise, religiously during my childhood. I read and collected the comics with glee every single month from that weird old man that was the only person in the country that sold the comics in that particular place. I feverishly watched and rewatched the Sam Raimi trilogy throughout my teen years, trying to figure out the many moves of Tobey Maguire. <laughs> But most pertinently to this particular video, I also played the video games. A lot. My first experience with the Spider-Man video game was all the way back in the year 2000, smack bind in the middle of the joyful days of Diablo 2, Nokia 3310s, and wrestling being cool. A little studio called Neversoft were on fire, having just released their now classic Spider-Man game, a little over a year removed from their very first Tony Hawk's Pro Skater being flung into the world. A fully 3D Spider-Man game was perhaps the biggest thing that had happened in my life up to that point. And before you jump to conclusions, remember two things. Yes, I was a sad, sad little boy. And two, the mere thought of superheroes being so popular with the masses a la this Marvel Cinematic Universe was certain viably mad back in 2000. Hell, this was two years before even Tobey Maguire, the legend, the man, the beautiful, oh, what a lad, had made his buy as Spider-Man, never mind Marvel having anything resembling the colossal cinematic universe that they've spent the past decade building. To be blunt, superhero movies and TV shows weren't quite up to the standard of today. I mean, this was the peak of live-action Spidey in those days. Yeah! And I mean, I still watch the shit out of it, but Sam Raimi's trilogy, it is not. So when I finally got my grubby mitts on the game, it was everything I could have dreamed for. I was finally in Spidey's shoes. Even though Never Saw Spider-Man has ostensibly aged since its release, I will always love it for its engaging plot, wonderful voice acting, reverence towards the source material, various character cameos, and its overall charm and execution. As I mentioned earlier, it's simply a classic, and I'll hear nothing less about it. However, for all its obvious brilliance, I do not love it for its free-flowing web cleaning action. Poor Spidey spent the majority of his time indoors, and when he did sporadically make it outside to get some fresh air, albeit toxic air, he was confined to a select few rooftops that were routinely separated from each other by the distance of exactly two of Spidey's swings, which oddly enough was the maximum amount of swings our hero could muster at a time before succumbing to what I can only assume was sheer exhaustion. This was not the freedom-inducing web cleaning I craved throughout my childhood. My web shot straight into the stratosphere and for no discernible reason were able to support the weight of a grown ass man in spandex. I knew it made no sense in relation to how physics normally operates, but I was young and unfamiliar with reality so I begrudgingly accepted it as it was the closest I could get to being Spider-Man. Hell, I even fully immersed myself in the fact that the fog at street level was truly toxic and not some plot device disguising the severe technical limitations of the PlayStation. Oh, to be innocent and not a jaded piece of shite. This unsatisfying trend of skyward swinging continued into Spider-Man 2 Enter Electro, and it even made its dirty way to the PS2 generation with Spider-Man the movie. I was genuinely devastated while playing Spider-Man the movie that there is still a game locked away in my imagination more enthralling than the one I was actually playing. A game in which my webs needed to attach to buildings in order to swing. A game in which I could be saved from absolute certain death by a simple, well-placed, last-minute shot towards a tree in Central Park. A game in which I could free roam GTA 3 style around the streets, alleyways and skylines of New York. And pretty much a game in which I just felt like Spider-Man, and not like a man floating through the sky on an invisible treadmill. 
But fast forward two years to 2004, and everything changed with Spider-Man 2. It did it. It gave me the feeling that I'd begun to accept science nor video games would ever give me. I was transported into a world in which I could swing my troubles away in a manner that felt satisfying, fun, tense, and like Spider-Man. Even in the years since its release, Spider-Man 2 holds a special place in the hearts of many people. I wouldn't dare speak on anyone else's behalf, but I'll toss my own feelings into the air as to why it's so revered. No other Spider-Man game has come close to matching or surpassing the cathartic web slinging Spider-Man 2 managed with aplomb. It was an unbelievable technical leap forward from the Spider-Man games of yesteryear, as the web slinging mechanics had Spider-Man act not as a flying jogger, but as a pendulum. This sh simple shift into the realm of realistic physics made Spidey's locomotion feel gloriously accurate and fueled by momentum. Not only did the physics involved in driving Spider-Man around the city feel just right, but the fluidity behind the web slinging further elevated the whole experience. With every single swing I felt like I was in complete control of where I wanted to go and how quickly I wanted to go there. It was simply mesmerizing, swinging block to block in a focused trance of sharp turns and well-timed swings. And unlike many other games that involve superhuman traversals through various landscapes, this mastery of the web and traversal through the city wasn't an illusion of expertise caused by automation, nor was it prompted by a quick time event. It was obtained through patience, time and skill. The whole easy to learn, difficult to master thing comes to mind, no matter how cliche that you know, is. But really, everything about the web slinging came together perfectly. I would boot up Spider-Man 2 to simply swing around the city. I wouldn't play through any missions, I wouldn't help get any fucking balloons. I would just sit back and lose myself one swing at a time. Point A and point B slowly becoming less and less relevant, the space between providing me the comfort and bliss I craved. So booting up the game in 2018 is a surreal experience, it meant so much to me at the time of its release. It's a time capsule of a wonderful time in my life when I actually thought science could catch up to fiction and grant me superpowers. The dated graphics, muddy textures, sparsely populated city and sometimes dire voice acting just don't matter to me. Because what Spider-Man 2 achieved on a personal level is so much more important. I've never seen the essence of a character captured so well with a single mechanic in a video game, before or since. And if you ask me, that's why there's been so much discussion and conversation around the web swinging mechanics of Insomniac Games' upcoming take on Spidey. Yes, it might seem like a trivial thing to worry about, or even a complete waste of time discussing, but look, I'm passionate in how I waste my time, and I'm passionate about Spider-Man. And here's the thing, web swinging is Spider-Man. It's what defines him. It's his iconic trademark. When you play a game based on a character you love, you want to feel like that character. No one wants to play a Batman game in which Batman has the neck physics of a Michael Keaton or George Clooney era costume. It's just like movies. If something as fundamental as how a character moves or expresses themselves, or if something is just off kilter, the illusion of that person disappears. Spider-Man 2 avoided that trap by making such an effort to create a swinging mechanic that served the character, as well as serving the gamer, seen as, as it was just fun as hell. Video games are unlike any other medium because they are a beautiful dance between player and character. You navigate numerous worlds, wondrous situations and dire straits together. They can offer you the chance to be something more, someone else or nothing like before. You, as the player, and the character that you're playing as, go on a journey in which neither one of you could go on without each other. But purely implementing mechanics, game engines, dialogue, or shite acting can make it feel like your dance partner is stepping all over your toes. And I don't want to have painful toes when I load up Insomniac Spider-Man. I want to feel the excitement of traversing New York as everyone's favourite wall crawler. I want to reconnect with that part of me that wanted to be a hero growing up. The freedom I yearned for as a boy has become ever more difficult to find as the swarm of adulthood has engulfed me. That sounds fucking dark. But maybe given the opportunity to lose myself in the swing might hold off that swarm for a while. Because no matter how little I wish to admit it, I doubt my web swinging powers will be coming in this life. So I guess for the time being, I just have video games to parlay my fantastical notions. And I'm looking forward to swinging through New York once again. Thanks for watching.